and we're back. We're all raring to go. All the cameramen are ready. Say hello to each other, cameramen. Hello. Hello. Okay. Right, we're going to continue our tour, and we're going to stop first at this one. Have you ever seen more boat action? Gentlemen, Hello. what is going on here? It looks stunning. Right, we've got Caesar invading Britain. Mm -hmm. um, this is in 55 BC. The Roman fleet is uh, pulled up off the coast of Kent at Deal. Yep. Um, the troops are disembarking. The Britons are hurrying forward to meet them. And there's a big reinforcing uh, force of chariots hurtling down from the direction of Dover. Yeah, it just looks fabulous. Oh, thank you very much. So what rules are you using to play this? Then? We're using a version of Hail Caesar. Yeah. Um, we've shortened it slightly for the purposes of the game. Yeah. Um, it's being run by a bunch of guy called the Bricks and Berserks, mm -hmm. um, who are running games every couple of hours. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's very fast. We played it twice. Um, I know that the Romans won at least once. I don't know who won the last game. Um, but we've got one more game coming up this afternoon. Now, let's talk about the terrain, right? First off, the boats. Oh, my God, the boats. Uh, this yeah. is a Zvita boat, this one, I, I yeah, think. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's galleons over here. Come on over. Do we talk yeah. about these galleons? Um, are they scratch-built, or, or no, where would you get these those? These two galleys are um, from Grand Manor. Yeah. Um, they're uh, a resin uh, kit. And yeah. There's a lot of work in assembling them. I would and they've been built so. specifically for the game. This is a scratch-built boat. Um, that's Grand Manor, and you're right, that's a Zvezda kit mm. at the end, which I converted from a cog. It's just fam fabulous. So what's with the elephant then? Right. One of the Roman writers, Frontinus, uh -huh. uh, tells us that Caesar brought an elephant to Britain right. uh, with him to scare the natives. Uh -huh. Now, I'm not entirely convinced that Caesar brought an elephant, because he doesn't mention it in his own, uh, in his own writings. But yeah. We've got to have an elephant. If someone says he brought an elephant, we should have an elephant. Absolutely. Any excuse to have an elephant. Yeah, Look, absolutely. It looks fabulous. Well done. Look, the have a great day. My friend Mark. <laughs> well done, Mark. Right, let's mosey on and see what else we can see. Ah, we, we, have, we have a visitor. Can I have one minute? What is this big bottle Duval. before me? Duval. Duval. Or as we call it, devil. Yes, <laughs> You've brought this for you and the team because you do such fabulous work. Oh, really. mate. We love you guys in Belgium. Oh, look at that bottle of beer. I think I'm ready to weep. <laughs> and you've arrived, just at, the, you've arrived just at the point of the whole, ve the whole thing when I, I couldn't be more ready for a beer. Mate, Watch out, it's, that it's is beautiful. normal lager. So. That is beautiful. But I can't carry it just yet, okay. so you'll have to come over and share one with us in a little later on. I can't drink beer. Oh. I'm not allowed. Oh, no. <laughs> right, we'll catch up with you shortly. We're over in the corner. Okay. We have, uh, we're going up an aisle now that doesn't have much in the way of gaming tables, but it does have a few uh, vendors that are doing something new that I would like to talk about. To begin with, I want to try and catch over here, see if I can catch the attention of the guys at Vitrix, who are doing World War II aircraft. Excuse me, Mr. Vitrix man, can we borrow you for one second? We want to have a look at your uh, World War II aircraft. Ta -da! So what can you tell us about them? Oh, go on. Julian, you, you tell them about Um True 15mm one hunt in 100 scale. Um, they are not simple resin kits that you that are available on the market at the moment. These are proper injection molded plastic uh, models. Uh, the tooling is underway at the moment for both the Stuka and the Typhoon. Uh, the planes will come with a telescopic injection molded plastic telescopic um, flight stand which will also have a ball and socket joint on the the top so you will be able to pose yeah exactly yeah. there's going to be simple get started with aerial warfare wargaming rules in the set but we are currently looking at developing a much more complex um, aerial uh, combat rule set with two I cannot name them other companies at the moment right, okay. <laughs> okay. okay okay yeah we're sticking with single engine aircraft for the time being four actually at tooling or CAD that's the Stuka the Typhoon um, the P47 Thunderbolt and an IL2 Sturmovic yeah. but I'm also looking as long as they sell starting 
uh, two more classic dogfight fighters. Undecided. Be like our Spitfire Hurricane. Spitfire Messerschmitt, yeah. or maybe a Focke Wolf Mus Mustang, yeah. something like that, or a Zero Wildcat. We just don't know at the moment. Fantastic. So they're uh, they're hard plastic. Hard plastic. They're one one hundred scale, which is fifteen mil for all of us. Um, do we know roughly how many will be in a box? Or? Three in a box with three flight stands. Couldn't be bad at that. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Good luck with it. Okay, so moving on up. We have a, another terrain uh, company here called Tablescape. And I just want to quickly show you some of the stuff that, the, that they have going on. So they have a lot of little uh, resin uh, pieces. It's all pre-painted and some of it's done in kind of hard foam. We are big fans of these barricades. They are, they are fantastic little pieces, along with other things such as uh, bunkers, trench systems, tank traps. Very cool, very cool. Okay, so what else have we got? Here we have a company called Dark Star. Um, I want to get in here. Dark Star doing some awesome busts. Can you tell us a little bit what you brought? Well, uh, we got these two. These are on offer today, just for today, just for the show. Um, they're inspired by the Bram Stoker um, Dracula film, which is obviously the Dracula werewolf, mm -hmm. and then the Dracula bat. Uh, we've got some orcs, which are Mayan sculpts. My, all of these are Mayan sculpts. They're beautiful. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Absolutely yeah, absolutely Good fun, good fun. Uh, we've got some trolls, we've got a giant, we've got some all sorts of things. We've got some old, old stuff there. Uh, we've, all of our terrain stuff is all very new. Yeah. Um, that only we only got that packaged this week. Mm -hmm. um, some of it we didn't get packaged, so it's not here, unfortunately. Yeah. But we do a range of 30 mil, 40 mil, 60 mil uh, terrain bases, and uh, they're going very well. We've been very, very pleased. Fantastic. Where do people need to go online to find out more about you guys? www.darkstarminiatures.co.uk. Fantastic. Thanks, Have a great show. Next up, we have Battle Foam. And uh, Jame is busy. <laughs> wow. Well, that kind of thing happens from time to time at a show like this. <laughs> There's not a lot you can do about that. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to squeeze in and say hello to the lovely Jema as soon as I get rid of the beard rash. Um, let, me just, uh, let me just try and see if I can get attention here. Sorry, gents. I'm only going to keep her for one second. Hello, Jema. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Are you having a good show? Oh, yes. It's been busy. Now, the, all we want to know is, did you bring any of that cool stuff that Romeo was showing at Adepticon? You know, um, the UK unfortunately always gets stuff a little bit later, um, but we are trying to get that Moly system here, so I think in July we'll have some new bags here. Oh, we can't wait. Yeah. We can't wait. And then the uh, Privateer Press Tournament bag that everybody has been so excited about yeah. in the US, we should have that here in July as well. So. Excellent. Well, we We're will stay tuned. Got to get that stuff over here. We got to get Romeo over here as well, but yeah, not if it means that you don't come over, Jamie. No, because just make you, him come with me. Yes, that's how we'll we do it. We need a vacation or a holiday, as you call it. A holiday, right? Speaking of holidays, we're going this way for the holidays. I'll see you later. Take care, folks. Bye bye. This particular side, um, we've got some of the beautiful, beautiful foreground terrain. So let's see if we can find somebody. Yes, we can find somebody from foreground. Hi, how you doing? You are right. We want to see your new stuff. We've got to go this way then. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. You might even find Adam. Are you having a good show? We're having a good show. We're having a really good show. Uh, around the outside. This uh -huh. is Guy. Guy's a guy who, if you can't, if you, if you want someone to make your kit for you, then you need to contact Guy. He makes loads of kits. How, in the last three months, I think you've made 60 or 70 kits for us. Um, 60, and then we've made the 
17 buildings for the uh, pirate village as well. So Guy's the man. Guy's your guy. He's the model guy. I can see Pegasus Bridge on this. So let me let me try to squeeze around here. Sorry there, gents. So I see Pegasus Bridge in three separate scales. We do indeed see Pegasus Bridge in three separate scales. So this can I can I touch it? Yeah. Go on. <laughs> I'll show oh. you that. Okay. So this is the this. If you move it down like that, that's uh -huh. great. okay. Now this here. This was an amazing... It slides! It does slide. <laughs> this was an amazing uh, uh, designed piece of engineering. This, if you can imagine, is like a train diesel engine. This is a train diesel engine that's been turned on its side. Yes. And this is the, this is the, the, the tractor unit, the power tractor unit that, ac that, that actually used to raise the bridge and lower the bridge. This, is, this little bit here, this is, has got a hole underneath it, and this is where you can put sand in your kit. And the reason you might want to put sand in your kit is because this up. is a ballasted yeah, oh. bridge. Which means the only the only thing is is obviously you have to pull it backwards. But as yeah. you can see, as you can see with it with it here, it's actually not, it's actually going backwards like this. Yeah. And so the actual center of the the center of the actual model itself is moving. So you go all the way back. It's a bit of a fragile baby at the moment, but it yeah. will to make it a little bit more durable. And then it stays up. It'll be getting the same in 20 mil and the same in 15 mil. Oh. And this is an example, this is what we do when we get what we call a proof of concept. So we, we, get it, we, we make a model and then we see what bids we can add to it. We, we see how we can pimp our, yeah. our, our model and make it look as, as much like we, uh, we want it to look. And then we start looking at the colors. Yeah. We look, start looking at what, what would be good this, colors. Because this That's effect, it comes. it comes every color on there like this. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a guy now, he's putting on, on that fantasy building, he's putting on an optional extra of roof tiles. Yeah. But everything else that was on the fantasy building, so they're coming out in July, that's the kit as it comes. So everything that's there, the little hatch that opens, oh, the doors yeah. that open. Uh -huh. um, I think these are some of the toys that you wanted yourself after the show. Oh. Um, everything is actually part of the kit. Yeah. Now, if I take you over here, you can see... Right, let's go this way. You can see the, 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 the little town. That this is did. your new, this is, this is a new this line is for a, you, your entry into fantasy. This is, a, this is our new uh, uh, modern... Uh, Let's see if we can get over here. I'm going to let you go that way. And so this is, uh, this is the, the port of Mordenburg. Yeah. And uh, you've got uh, different houses and different things on this town. Obviously, this range hasn't come out yet, so you might notice that there's the gallows from our Dead Man Hand mm -hmm. cowboy range. Yeah. And also some of the boardwalk has worked very well as, as uh, port side. This is very nice. This is from Zvezda. <laughs> yes. yes. A lot of companies use this ship. Yeah. It's a fantastic ship, but it gives you an idea. It's got our carts and wagons. Over the next, uh, it comes out in July. With most of our ranges, what we do is we will then support that range for about a 24 month period. Yeah. So that you get a good, a good uh, collection of buildings every month or every two months. And then even after that period, we like to add a, a few different bits to the range. So even oh, some of the ranges right. that we've had for a long time, it's like if you look at the, the Dark Age table just behind yeah, you. Yeah, well, let's go there because okay. I want to talk about that as well. So uh, over here we have the, the Dark Age table. Where do you get a load of this? this is, do you want the roof back on or do you want the roof taken oh, off? The, All right. the roof, the roof. So this is, this is Harot, the, uh, the, 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 the famous hall of, of Beowulf. Yeah. And if you look in this side, we've had a few bits removed from here. So oh. we've had a few bits that have been taken out so people can see what's happening. Yep. And you might notice that in there is the sigil of, uh, of Gripping Beast. And the reason that that's in there is because they asked us to put it in there. Yeah. Uh, I believe they've got a, a new game coming out. I don't actually know whether it's a supplement or whether it's actually a, a, an integral part of Saga. Yeah. But this is the gaming arena. Underneath all of this, when you lift it all up, is the gaming arena for their new um, uh, sort of like a brawl in a, in a dark age king's hall between his not so welcome guests. Oh, and, and that's going to be a fantastic game. And this is the new uh, uh, Flock Snow that we, uh, we produced, one of our flocks that we've, yes, we've you, got. Yes, because you guys have a range of flocks, but this we, we have snow a range of flocks. We do have a range of flocks. We also have a range of, of lengths. So for instance, this is a, this is a, is a, a half mil uh, flock. So it's, it's very, very fine. Yeah. And then what we do with this is, this table actually is green. It's completely green and everything. What you do is you, you sprinkle the snow flock on, Yep. And then after, for this show, we put a little bit of uh, um, uh, army painter uh, uh, matte varnish on it just to sort of like fix it here for the show. Yeah. But after the show, we can tap all this off, dry it all off, 
if we hadn't have used anything like that, we could then use the snow again. And so it means that because it's, it, it's not like that token powder that will stain it all or yeah, some other yeah, stuff, yeah. it means that you can get your board back pretty much to where it was before. Um, that was the idea of it. Our straw is a, is, is a bit longer, it's a four mil, so it gives you the idea that they put straw down on the tracks. Yep. And we do, we do all sorts of things, we do frosted ground, we do scorched earth, we do all sorts of things, because primarily we're about making the environment that makes your game more believable, you know, yeah. make, makes it so that you can, it's like when we, if in a few moments we go and look at the, what the Cardiff War Gamers have done on a 12 by 4 table, yeah. it gives you an idea of where we are at with how we think our games are well, played. Well, let's do that. Well, let's, should we go to the Japanese yep, one? Let's go and check that out, so. We've now gone to uh, Edo period Japan Beautiful. at the very early stage. And so this is our, this is our, our Edo range village here. Mm -hmm. There's the village elder's house there. If you look in the village elder's house, all our buildings, if you open any building, you'll see the rest of the building inside. Oh, so you have the rice paper doors. Yeah. Um, it's a, it, it, and that's for his bedroom there. He's got, a, he's got a, an integral stable because he's the only man in the village with a horse. Yeah. And uh, that's his house there. Then you've got his, uh, he's got his own personal rice barn because he doesn't want to be too slim. It's a bit yeah. like myself. And then you've got the rest of the village here. R rice paddies out to get, again, uh, uh, help of our army painter there to make our rice paddies, as you may have noticed. But the actual trees and the thing, we, we're, we're, we're testing out the trees and the bamboo and everything else. And this could well be coming out as a foreground product yeah. uh, later on this year, maybe in the autumn of this year. And that's our Japanese table. Beautiful. The next table maybe people are a bit more familiar with. And at the moment there's a, a, an intense game of Dead Man's Hand going on. We, we make all the buildings for the Dead Man's Hand range. And again, if you just excuse me, Chris, you can see that the action just happened to go to the, to the bank. And so yeah. the action's happening in the bank. The trouble, the trouble is, is when you've got uh, safety deposit boxes, where all of them can be opened. Oh, come then on. And it can take you forever. <laughs> it looks like someone's run off with the safe, though, at the moment. Yeah. So I don't know if we're going to do that. Sorry, Chris, we'll let you get back to your game. But uh, there right. you go. Right. I'll just go this way and we'll go around. The level of detail that the foreground guys are putting into these buildings is just insane. The, the Cardiff War Games table. And this is Daryl over here. And he was the main guy Hello, who Darryl. actually organized all of this. And as you can Daryl's greatest invention, the invention that everybody would love, is. Daryl's broken sprue damaged buildings. What he does, what he does is he fills our kits. He, take, he keeps all the sprues, all the frames from the kits. And then with them, for absolutely nothing, he makes all this damage that goes over his building. So it, it can have either more or less damage. And I think Daryl's brilliant for doing that. And I have to say that because he and his mates have put on this table. It's absolutely fantastic. 12 by 4. How many buildings do you think you've got on the table? It's about 85 in total. They've got 85 buildings on the table. But the thing is with this is that you've got the British coming on from here. You've got the Germans coming this way. Both of them have got their infantry, infantry mounted up, haven't they, at the beginning of the game. You can go into any one of these buildings, anywhere you like down these streets, and you will find that every single building, every single layer of every building has the rooms the way it should be. Yeah. So that means that if you, if he, he doesn't know, if he's the Germans, he doesn't know where the British are going to be. He doesn't know whether they're going to be in that building or that building or that building. Or what floor, or of, or it, what floor yeah. of the building. What rule set are you using, Daryl, to play it out? We're actually developing a new rule set. It's coming out with um, Great Escape Games a bit later this year, I think. It's um, a really stripped down, very simple to play rule set. The idea being you have a big table, yeah. lots of terrain like this, lots of tanks on the table. Everyone, everyone likes a tank battle. It reminds me of a, of a sort of like a, um, you know, like a, a space corridor game. And, you've, and if you imagine you were a space corridor game and you were the commander of, of some tanks, and it is the most fantastic fun. I can't believe how much fun it is. And I can say that honestly, because the game has nothing to do with us. Um, do you know what? We it's are really going to have to have a go at We're going to have to have a play at it. We definitely will. I'll be will. the German. Now, on the topic of <laughs> space corridor games, we're doing a little bit of uh, research at the moment with us. Yeah, let, let's go and have a look at something, yeah, because there's a, there's a little piece that I want to have a, a very quick look at just this way here. Um, because I know sci-fi is something that you are very passionate about, but you've had a lot of other stuff that you wanted to do first. We, we've, the thing is, excuse me, please. Thank you very much. The thing is with, uh, with sci-fi and with fantasy is Everyone's got their own idea of what it should be. Everyone's yeah. got their own idea of what, it, of what it can be. And so what we are doing is we are looking at near future. We're looking at perhaps the next sort of uh, 
100 years from now, that sort of thing. We've got some guys who are looking at it at We're the just going to squeeze in here. Gents, my apologies. I will let you back in. So, so here we have this uh, pre-production pre sci-fi yeah. corridor system. It, so what we imagine is that uh, is if you, this, this, this would have to be built anywhere. It'd have to be a prefab kind of a thing. Yeah. So the actual frame of it, and again, everything will be cut from, in our kits comes yeah. pre-painted. It's pre-painted with our base paints. They're not really meant as necessarily the finished, the finished article. Our base paints are designed so that for one thing they could be used with lasers and they don't totally damage the machine. That took us a little bit of a while to figure out. Yeah. And then the next thing is, is that you have to prime MDF. You have to make it so that the MDF um, so that what the colors that you want are actually go more onto the surface rather than get sucked into what is after all a very dry material. Yeah. All our kits therefore are pre-primed. But we pre-prime them with color. If you can imagine, it's a bit like um, you get all the white bits, you put them on one sprue. You get all the red bits, you put them on another sprue, yeah. and then you cut them out. And then when they fit them together, they have like a three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle of yes. what they've got. Yeah. So this is why we were toying with the idea, should this be white, should it be silver, should it be a, mm -hmm. a black color? And that's what a lot of this is to do with. So we imagine that they would construct this somewhere. And then the next thing that you'd have to do is you'd have to to get your, your ducting sorted out. So I don't know if you can see that, but we've got some, some areas on this that enables ducting to go ducting through. To go through. And then we've got yeah. some wire that people can acquire. We're probably gonna put some in the kits. So, uh, say this could be some sort of a fluid, that kind of could yeah. be some sort of a tensioning cables. Mm -hmm. You've also got a bit of acrylic in there. There's also gonna be some more add-ons that go in there. Yeah. And then each, each end has, will have a magnet on the end. Now the magnet on the end is not, it's not actually designed so that, uh, you can pick it up and it won't snap apart. You yeah, want it to snap. To keep it's it. so that when you and I are playing and I knock it like that, it's yeah. not going to go. Do you remember when we used to play all the tile games and someone used to put their coke down or something and they're like, yep. uh, and So we're trying to avoid that sort of thing. That's just a little uh, a 10 mil scale building that we're, we're thinking of doing. And then this is how the corridors will work. They'll have corners. But these, will, these, these we, we envisage these as being quite short. Yeah. We envisage that, that, that these will be short little areas that go to larger rooms, larger play environments, so that, and, and we would say that if you were to use this as sort of um, the interior of a space station or the interior of a spaceship, yeah. there would be very few voids. Most of it would be room, so the idea is, is that the corridors will go round the room, will wrap round the rooms. Ah, yeah, because you need the most use Because you'd use the most yeah. use of it. And so also, we're also gonna have a system where there'll be a, uh, an outside uh, extra skin. So say this became a, a mining outpost or yeah. something else, or uh, uh, they would still use the same building uh, um, uh, uh, prefabbed equipment, yeah. but then what they'd have to have is some sort of a hard exterior. Yeah. So then we're gonna be hopefully bringing the range to, to people so they can do exactly that. Mm -hmm. They'll make the hard exterior they want, They'll make the, they can have uh, battlements on it, they can have that sort of thing yeah. on it, depending on what sort of game you want. Stunning. See, I even put more Stunning. Than you. Anyway, it's do you know, it was nice to get a rest. Look, it's always a pleasure, yeah, and I see, see. cannot wait to see where you're going with some of this stuff. Cheers, that Pegasus Bridge is to die for. It's good fun. Oh, right. So, Dave. <laughs> oh, I want to go back and. Uh, do you know what? Salute. Uh, right, this is it. We're going to start a campaign to have Salute run for three weeks. Yes, Instead of one day, it needs to run for three weeks so we can play all these games. The, the foreground stuff is immensely good. I've not seen them before. Oh, I just, I'm going back there. Later oh, on. it's superb. You know, it's just as, as, as terrain makers go, they don't come much better than well, foreground. Those guys are innovative. They're constantly looking at new materials for the, the exterior paints and stuff like that there. It's stonkingly good. Right, up this way here, we have some reenactors. Ten Hut! <laughs> Who wants to come and talk to me? <laughs> so, who are you guys and what are you doing today? We are the Firepower Living History team. We come from the Artillery Museum across the river. Uh -huh. And we're here to publicise Firepower and to fit in with the theme because it's D-Day. It looks stunning. Your kit is amazing. Now this man here, he's, he's my kind of uh, historical buddy. He knows a thing or two about yeah, history. Yeah. How good is this? It's just awesome. I always love going to be in that one. So can you tell me a bit about the, the uniform that you're wearing? I am wearing battle dress for an ATS, which is Auxiliary Territorial Services. Yeah. It's a female service. And it was the only female service in World War II that actually got military authority. Right. So we could go on gun sites, we fired guns. 
So they may have had the rifles, but I had the Beauforts gun, which fires 120 rounds, 40 mil a minute. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so anyone who says women didn't do much hasn't done the history, because yeah. it's not true. We've also got three different kinds of rifle. We have the SMLE. Somebody hand me one, please. Thank you. Back the double. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, there we go. That's your carbine, dear. The SMLE would be helpful. SMLE, that is a short magazine, Lee no, Enfield. This, this, this is a real thing. This, this is, is original, a real, isn't it? This is an original. It's been deactivated because we couldn't take it out in the public otherwise, but yeah. it is an original gun. It's a Mark IV. It would have been you used in D Day. Yeah, feel the weight. It is quite heavy. <laughs> yeah, it is. So is that the typical weapon that the ATS would have been running around with? Uh, this is what these soldier boys would have been running around with. Yeah. ATS didn't have handguns. Right. So um, soldiers would have had these mm -hmm. slung over their shoulder, along with a lot of webbing and yeah. a lot of work. But we also had... Now this... Not, really check this out. Yep. This is a Bren light machine gun. Now notice I say light. <laughs> Try lifting it by the handle. There's the handle. the handle. Try. Run, go, get to the chopper. <laughs> now yes, that yes. is what English call a light weapon. Yes, yeah. I can't imagine anyone wants to run around with one. Yeah. But she's actually a machine gun. That is just And it would be, a, you'd actually put the feet down and it would stand there next to a machine next to a big gun. As a medic, so I don't have to carry those guns. <laughs> yeah, me right. and actors end up carrying these, and believe me, after a while, you feel it. Right. Thank you so much for that. You've made a believer out of me. I want to join the ATS. <laughs> OK, so uh, let's uh, mosey on up to this side here. And I believe we're going to reach a point where we can take a break. <laughs> now, let's see who we've got. So there's some more uh, traders. Here's a uh, pen dragon. Um, again, what do you see this, right? I'm just going to squeeze in here. Look at these beautiful, beautiful little palm trees. Now, if you're trying to do anything in the desert, that is stunning. And they come at a whole lot of different sizes and scales. Absolutely beautiful. Is mini bits a new? Is it a new thing for you guys? No, we've been around since 2010, so four years now. Um, slowly expanding the ranges. So absolutely beautiful. So what can you tell us about them? Uh, they're very cheap. Yeah. <laughs> That's always a good start. 250 for 10 trees. Where are you going to get cheaper than that? Yeah. You, you don't. No, exactly. So that's the range. And I've got other things. Yeah. Um, there's some nice buildings that might actually be of interest to you guys. Let, let's have a look at them. Yeah. Full range of laser cut buildings from a, a guy local that was in Middlesbrough. Oh wow. Um, pricing is. Now is this a, this is clearly a sci-fi range, isn't it? Yes. So it's all. Yeah, you're looking at the workshop 40k market. Yeah. Um, but you're looking at only what, 15 pound for a... 15 pound for this building here. Yeah. And then this one's modular, isn't it? So you yes. could you can scale that up to whatever size you yep. want it to be. That one, 20 pound, I think that one is. Yeah. Um, so it's it's really good value for money for what you're getting. It is fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Okay, thank you for that. Who would have thought five years ago that laser beams would be the work. yeah would be the major thing in our industry. You know, we've had two things in our industry that have completely changed the landscape: laser beams and Kickstarter. Yes. And I like laser beams. <laughs> okay, we're going to take a very quick break. When we come back, we're going to continue the tour. there. Can we bore you one second just to find out what you're playing? Okay, we're playing Skirmish Sangin, uh -huh. which is a new modern system for modern Afghanistan yep. that um, been launched for about 12 months now. And we've come over from New Zealand to uh, 
help people at Salute have a go and have a play. This is modern. This is all modern. Ooh. Right? My attention so, levels have just went pating. Okay. So, so skirmish sanguine. Yeah, skirmish sanguine. Sanguine, right? Yeah. And it's um, skirmish wargaming for modern Afghanistan. Yeah. But it's basically a modern set of rules that can be played in any modern conflict. Mm -hmm. Right? But we based it in Afghanistan. So this, this is what we're playing well, here at the moment. That book looks beautiful. All right. Let's see if we can show some of it. It's beautiful. Thank you. I designed it. <laughs> wow. So myself so, um, and Craig are the writers. We've yeah. wrote, designed, produced the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And and we've the, the game's been selling for the last 12 months, building nicely. Yeah. And you know we're producing a set of uh, range of figures to go with it. Producing a second book called Sangin. Well, that Dispatches. was going to be my next question: yeah. is where do we get miniatures for modern Afghanistan? So Empress do some cracking miniatures, and so do Eureka. Mm -hmm. We we use both of them in the book, and yep. we use both of them to play, as well as our own miniatures, yeah. Sangin miniatures as well. So the idea being is you mix all three of them, and it's all great. Good. Great. Where do people need to go to find out more about this? www.skirmishsangin.com. Skirmishsangin.com. Look. Okay. Best of luck with that. That looks fascinating. Keep in touch. Okay, now we're starting to see modern stuff coming in. Now, that I have been waiting for. Now, where do you get a load of this? As gaming tables go, they don't get much better than this. Let's see, is there any, who can talk to us about it? Um, Dave Brown, let's see. Okay, so what can you tell us um, about what we're looking at here? Uh, this is a section of the Battle of Kursk in 1943. It just represents the village of uh, Ponyeri in the uh, central Kursk sector with the hill and heights beyond it. And what we see is the German assaults going in against the uh, Russian lines. Yeah, it's and fabulous. Playing at 15 mil scale, yeah? Using uh, 15 mil troops, mixture of manufacturers, uh, but we're using the new uh, Panzer Grenadier Deluxe rules that are uh, coming out shortly, so we're using them. That's the uh, Platinum, Platinum Press does them, or who it's does them? Partisan. It's Partisan. It's Partisan Press, press. do those. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, the follow-on that's been uh, follow-on from the second edition, Yeah. and it's the Deluxe one that just... Now, is there, there any kind of... Um, interesting aspects to the Panzer Grenadier rules that, that people should be, that would encourage people to go and have a look so at if them. If I just, uh, three main points uh, about them is they are quick and slick, they're, yeah. they're fast moving. Uh, the se second issue is you need to think about command. The yeah. command is a, is a central theme throughout. And uh, finally, there's uh, a phase at the end called the exploit phase, which the winner of the command initiative can use, you can bring on reserve deployments right in the centre of the table yeah. on company HQ stands. So if you've got infantry reserves, you don't see them as you do in normal war games, walking slowly up the table yeah. so you can observe what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They are deployed straight away on a company HQ, which means the element of surprise is maintained. Yeah, it's stonkingly good. Yeah. Right, have a great day guys and we'll, we'll catch up again soon. Okay, so just on the other side, we have uh, we have a game uh, I have been dying to find out more about. Um, who can I talk to about this game? We're just looking to find out what's going on and what are we looking at. What you're looking at is the Battle of the Pelennor Fields, uh -huh. which is the penultimate uh, major battle in Lord of the Rings cycle. Yes, yes. So this is outside the Minas Tirith city of Gondor. Yep. What we're doing today is a, a very small section of a uh, very big battle yeah. done as a skirmish game. I, it looks fabulous, absolutely fabulous. Now you're doing it at 54 mil or? These are 75 mil. 75? We're more insane than that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, and they're a toy range. Yeah. They're not war game figures. Uh -huh. We got these from Toys R Us and Woolworths, etc. It just looks incredible. Uh, in terms of the terrain, all custom made by you guys? Or? Um, except for the trees, they're by a company called Last Valley, uh -huh. um, who made them to our design, because yeah. uh, they didn't really make them that size. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> it just looks fabulous. So what rule set are you using to play it out? Um, we wrote our own one, yeah. uh, so the rules are on there, mm -hmm. so no big books. Um, we do them as participation games, that's what yeah. we always do, but the meat of it is in the cards that people have. So there's a deck of cards for special actions. So you actually get a different deck for the Rohan and the Orcs. Yeah. So the Rohan pack is written specially for them. 
so you get cavalry type cards yeah. and it encourages you then to make cavalry type moves and the orcs um, the orc cards are rubbish in defence so they have to attack because, and that then gets the players yeah. with no knowledge of the background acting with the, as the armies did what a fabulous mechanic. It looks great. And there's a big dragon over there, a Nazgul, and it looks just terrifying. Thank you very much, gents. I would have put D-Day stripes on the Nazgul, but... <laughs> they wouldn't let you. OK, guys, thank you very much. OK, so moving on. We have what uh, we have someone here. Can you talk to us about this board, then? Can, yeah. yeah, excellent. So what are we looking at here? Right, basically today uh, we're running some uh, like a really small intro game. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have just a basic setup of a squad each uh, and an MMG team. Yeah. Just to explain the basic dynamics of the game. Yeah. Uh, to say. This is bolt action it's by bolt work, action. by the way. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so and also we've just got a bit of a display over here, uh, probably imitating a scene from France. Um, obviously, when during the Allied invasion, yeah, a lot of people have been doing. And then, if they feel like they want to use a bit more men in the game, then we probably we had a, a game earlier on with about yeah. six people. So it was, yeah, pretty good. But now it's, it's going really great. well. Great, it is great. So, uh, was the were the buildings uh, all custom built, scratch yeah, built I for this? So yes, we have um, over there. We have the foreground ones, which are really popular. Yeah, uh, obviously they, they break down, so a lot of people mm -hmm. appeal to them. Um, also, our ruined um, hamlets and yeah. farmhouses. Uh, and also just some other buildings that I believe are from Sarissa. Um, but yeah, it's a good combination of all, all the scenery that's uh, that's available to us. And I know it's proven to be quite a popular popular piece this morning. So yeah, it looks, it looks awesome. Look, thanks very much, and we hope you have a great show. OK. Ha ha! Are you having a good show? This is Kev. Morning. War Machine Maestro. Extraordinaire. Well, maybe a little bit. Are you working today? I've just finished my shift. So yeah. I've been demoing uh, all morning, so now I've got freedom to actually look around. Oh, now the fun begins then. Oh yes, that's, I had a quick look around before this thing started. I'm really interested by the Luchador game, um, and just having a look around, just admiring. It, so it, happy it, days. We are having a blast. Kev, enjoy yourself, mate. We'll catch you later. Okay, so we've now reached the point of the... <gasps> No, don't shoot! Oh! Yeah, I've just been shot by a high elf. <laughs> right, over here we have the painting. Ah, oh, hello there! Can you say hello? Hello! You having a good day? Mm hmm. Yeah. You've got lots of free things, haven't you? Oh, hey, that's always good. You have a great day, okay? Okay, so over here, we're gonna squeeze through. Coming through, coming through, coming through, coming through, coming through. The painting competition, of course. Um, it's enormous, it is absolutely enormous. There are so many entries, but they're gradually weaning through them. Um, our mate, Peachy, who's doing the, the, the Shadow Stug auction, has an entry. If I can just squeeze through here, this is his entry here. Lovely looking tank, and you know how we all love tanks. Um, there are tons and tons of entries, and the caliber of the painting um, in this particular competition has went through the roof. The comparison between these last couple of years is just insane, absolutely insane. Right, so before we head down that way, I wanna take one other quick trip. So follow me here, one of my favorite companies is a plastics company now you may never have bought their stuff direct but you will have bought the stuff they make because they make tons of stuff for loads and loads of different manufacturers Terry Hello, how are you how mate doing, so Terry have you anything new exciting with you today well we've got our brand spanking new mud brick house oh you can build from this plastic kit the, the Adobe village you can build it about 30 different ways with the basic kit and the accessory pack that we do. And we will do an accessories two and a three, perhaps with higher walls, perhaps a minaret. Um, so it's a, it's a wonderful, versatile kit. That is fantastic. So any, any kind of desert campaign, yeah. you're in luck with and that. Biblical, we, we've like just that. been video bombed, hello there. <laughs> Our new sandbags. Yep. That you can build up little singles whatever to to assist with um the perry's eighth army 
It is and fantastic. And also the brand new kids on the block, Shield Wolf Miniatures. Ooh. They're mountain orcs, 20 figures. They 20, are stunning. 22 pound 50. They are stunning. They're as good a quality as Games Workshop. Now who's day. Shield Wolf? Shield Wolf are a brand new Greek company based yeah. in Athens. Wow. And they've come to me for the tall in. Yeah. And this is what they produce. And it's and it's got a unique feature where the, the top jaw and the lower jaw are separate, so you can have open mouths, oh, closed mouths, nice. skew yeah. them slightly. So Everything in between, like a broken anything, jaw. Anything, yeah. yeah. And each arm fits each, any body. It's yeah. totally unique. And it's Terry, really, that really is awesome. Right, if any of you guys ever decide to start up your own miniatures companies, that's the man to speak to, because, well, he will totally sort out all your plastic needs. Right. Moving over this way, we want to go right the way down. This video bombing is great. However, the people that we're speaking to are not expecting it at all. So <laughs> let's just squeeze through here. You can see that the anticipation on the painting competition is now building up. And now we're back to gaming tables, the things that we love most. So, right, let's go over to this one. There's a small skirmish game taking place. Hello there. Right. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've got going on here? Right, this is a simple set of war games rules for skirmishing between Saxons and Vikings. I love Vikings. A Viking raid on the village and you fight man to man each figure has his own set of stats written down on his card, and as he takes wounds, his stats go down. He gets yeah. weaker and slower. And the Saxons are trying to defend their village, and the Vikings are trying to pillage. So if somebody's, uh, if somebody's interested in getting a hold of this game or trying it out for themselves, is there a website they can go to? Yep, there certainly is. There's, uh, there's East Street Games, so eastreetgames.com. The rules are available as a free PDF download, yep. uh, or you can buy, uh, buy one of our, our lovely uh, booklets here for <laughs> uh, just £5, so it's not going to break the bank, yeah. and uh, do give it a go. So now, the other thing to say about the game is that each warrior, as I say, each warrior has unique stats. You go onto the website, you take a picture of your warrior, upload it to the website, the site will generate the uh, generate the stats for you. Yeah. Each warrior has unique stats. You say what the warrior's got. That's factored in when the stats are printed off. There's also kill slips. So what happens is uh, when you kill a warrior, you uh, hand your opponent the kill slip for the uh, for that, yeah. and then uh, and then your your opponent can then go away, go onto the website, record that skill, record that kill. Sorry, yeah. uh, he gets the uh, his warrior gets the the experience for that kill. Your warrior takes wounds. How cool is that? Hey, how cool is it? Yeah. That, that is like a living skirmish game that if you've got a good gaming group that's yeah. into that, it'll grow and grow and grow absolutely. and all the data's there. Absolutely, absolutely. That's what we're looking at. That's what we're aiming towards. Yeah. And you want to get a, a, a history of who's killed who. So you can look at a warrior and you can see who all the different, uh, all of the opponents that he's killed over the years. Fantastic. Look, best of luck with that, gentlemen. Thank you. Okay, so moving on down a little bit, uh, we have another hugely hugely exciting uh, gaming table here uh, I want to try and squeeze in sorry gents may I squeeze in here just bring so can you tell us a bit about what we're looking at here right well as you know today's uh, salute theme is D-Day um, 1944 Absolutely. so we're actually playing a slightly alternative version of that yep. and this is set in uh, just after the coronation of Edward VIII uh -huh. It's alternative history, and this is 6th of June, D-Day 1937. <laughs> um, the Royal Navy and the regular army are landing on the south coast. Yep. Uh, it's rather heavily shelled, unfortunately, so our beach huts, etc. The loyal Royal Navy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, they've been shelling the beach huts. Uh, and the I'll come around this side so, here. Yeah, so yeah. 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 The rebel forces are on yeah. the way back. They're being pushed backwards. The rebel forces. The rebel forces, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're over there the somewhere. Forces, right? I saw them earlier. Yeah. Ambulances to yes, hide yeah. in. Yeah. yeah. So as I say, they're being pushed back at the moment. The idea is it's a sort of pastiche of Gold Beach. Yes. Um, so we're pushing up forward and we're on the fourth beach landing wave now. Yeah. 
Uh, oh, but I say set in, in 1930. What rule? Have you just made your own custom rules for this, or? The rules we use, we, we, my own local war games club, we've been running a campaign for 50 games now yeah. of this period, and we've evolved the rules over that period, so it's a custom-built set of rules. Fantastic. Yeah. Look, best of luck with that, gents. Cheers. This, you've got to see. This is one of the main... Right, let me try to put this into perspective. Drop Zone Commander works on the basis of drop ships, okay? These drop ships are dropping in troops and they're dropping in tanks and things like that. If I can just show you that single piece there, this single piece, that is the drop ship. This is the behemoth that brings them all in. And I believe that there's 100 or 200 drop ships in this. Now, it's not finished. The guys from Hawk are still working on it, but they've built this. Do you know what? Why am I telling you when I could grab this man and he could tell you, hello, hey, Dave. You? You're right. Dave, I'm just um, absolutely enamored with this thing. Come on over and tell us all about it. Okay. Yeah, it's the beast. It um, a beast. <laughs> it's a UCM strike carrier. Does it have a name? Um, Avenger. Avenger. Yeah, it it. Couldn't, it's actually quite a small ship in the background wise. It's the largest thing that can go atmospheric for the UCM. Yeah. But it, it couldn't have a grand name like Conqueror of Worlds or anything. Cause it's, <laughs> it's not actually a very big ship. Yeah. It's about the same size as USS Nimitz in terms of like real scale comparisons to give you an idea of how big the thing is. It's a beast. It's I mean, some of the numbers for it are mad. Like I've used over 100 feet of glue gun glue over a pint of super glue. <laughs> like, yeah, I've, I've worked for over 400 hours in the last month on it. Oh, it's been, wow. I've worked some, I haven't had a day off for a month. It's yeah. been heavy. Didn't sleep last night, obviously. It's I mean, extraordinary, it's, though. It's a shame I didn't finish it, but there's a bit more work to do, but it will be back at yeah. other shows finished and you know it looks presentable enough for here and that oh, was you know absolutely. that was the goal to get it get it looking like a spaceship for salute and no. you know <laughs> let, let, let's get let, let's get to the meat of this okay why did you build it well a few reasons one i wanted to oh, well that's obviously a good that's one, one. like yeah. i love building models and i haven't built a big model for years and you know big models draw in people obviously yeah. and everybody loves a crazy thing like this it shows because why come to a show like this if it's just a big shop? Yes, you know, correct. It shouldn't just be a big shop. It should be about more than that. Yeah. It should be like your like like GW used to do, I suppose. You know, stuff like oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's you know, inspirational. I remember, stuff. I remember yeah. that when I was a kid. You know, going going to see stuff that they'd make, and you think, I want to, I want to make stuff like that now. Yeah. And you know, it gets the imagination flowing for everybody, and we can use it for all sorts of things. It's going to be used for artwork in books. Yeah. You know, we could even do some video with it, green screen. You know, because it, it's going to be as high quality as a Hollywood studio model when it's yeah. completely done. So it'll be good for some videos. It'll be on our show circuit for at least a year. Yeah. Uh, probably not to every show because it's a- Who do I need to kill thing. to get one? <laughs> <laughs> Me. <laughs> There's only the one and I'm not building another. It was, yeah, Bex is my girlfriend. She's banned me from ever doing anything like this again. Yeah, I can you know, imagine. It, it's, been, it's, it's been a difficult month, to be honest, because yeah. I, I lost a couple of days at the start of the project to various other things, like the new resistance stuff that had to get done first, and yeah. that went on a few extra days longer. It was more important than this. So I had a limited amount of time, a time budget kind of yeah. for this. So it's been big, it's been big work. Yeah. So, you know, but... I'm, I'm happy with where I am at this point overall. Yeah. You know, looking back at it, it's funny, I've done a video diary of the whole build. Yes, we'll be showing you that. Yeah. I, you know, seeing, it, seeing, seeing the early ones, I'm like, oh, Dave, you're so naive. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and like, I'm feeling good about things at the moment. It'll be fine, I'll have it all painted for salute. Yeah, rubbish. Now, <laughs> the other big thing about this ship is this herald something that might be on the horizon? It does, yeah. This is part of a kind of announcement, quiet announcement, that we're working on a spaceship game. Yeah. A lot of people have asked us for one, and I love spaceships, so we're doing a spaceship game. Yes. Um, Andy Chambers is working on the rules as well. The Andy Chambers? The Andy Chambers, yeah. He wrote Battlefleet Gothic and stuff, which is a game I loved when, when I played back in the yeah. day. 
uh, with the rules are still very much in the place testing stage at the moment yep. and very much in flux so I can't really talk much about how the game will play. So there is the possibility that we could get to play with one or more of these bad boys. This in, I, I can tell you about the size of this completely it's all worked out this this is about that big in spaceship oh. game. I said it was a small ship yeah this is one basically one centimeter in spaceship game is one meter in drop zone yeah. and so I think that makes it 0.1 mil scale or something yeah. like that but it, it's that's that's the scale link so this is there so you can get a really tangible idea of how big all the ships are yeah. you see this and you go right so that's a whoa <laughs> it's stunning you know. it's stunning right well Dave good work on that man um I cannot wait for that spaceship game. You know, if it is any way near as great as Drop Zone Commander, uh, it's just going to blow us away. Speaking of gaming tables, let me give you a quick look at this one. This is the Drop Zone Commander display table this year. And as you can see, it's got all the monorails uh, and everything on it. It's, it's huge. It's impressive. Boy, oh boy, does that game do it for me. It really does.